I haven't either. Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. We're live. I did it to the guys again. I had to hit the button. It was two o'clock, y'all. You always do that. I need to put this awesome guitar up. Um, so what happens before the podcast is uh, I go get everything hooked up and, and smoking, and then I find a link and I send it out, and then I wait for all the guys to show up. I'm gonna put this guitar up, Jason Cole. What's going on? Yo yo yo! It's uh cold and blustery, and I was like. I'm going to fly indoors this week. Every Tuesday, we have indoor flying at the local church gymnasium, and I was all pumped about that. And I drive out there. Nobody's there. I'm the only car there. I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, maybe they're late. He's like, are they doing indoor tonight? I was like, I sure hope so. I drove all the way out here. And, uh, you know, I look on the Facebook group, and then – few pages back before Christmas, they announced that they weren't going to have it on January 2nd. Now, Good job, Jason. Jason. I know you don't, you're not a cussing type of fella, but did did you cuss a little bit? I said, son of a biscuit. <laughs> he said, dang, nabbit. And then I drove home listening to an audiobook. Audiobook? What are you listening to? Uh, I'm listening to, um, let me see what the, I, I've listened to the first one was called We Are Legion. This one is called For We Are Many. Oh. The Bobiverse. It's like science fiction. Oh, hear that, Matt Gun? I do. I hear Jason's cut. He's cutting out. Jason, you need to do the classic modem reset. I was going to say, I would, I'd call him up. Yeah, you have some issues going on, buddy boy. I don't have any issues streaming video, uh, HD quality video streaming. None of that has a problem. So it's a problem with this browser or Google Hangouts because it is not <clears throat> the internet. Well, yeah. Matt Gunn. It's 19 degrees and sunny. Feels like 11, it says over here on my screen. What's it like up your way? Um, let's take a look. I'll tell you what. It's cold AF, if that uh, makes any sense to you guys. But it is nine, nine. Look at that. nine degrees. Ooh. Wind chill feels like negative one. It's a little bit snowy outside. And I hate it because I can't do any flying. I don't even want to be outside. I made this really nice igloo in the backyard. It's got a roof on it. It's got uh, it's pretty cool, but I haven't even had a chance to enjoy my igloo with my son yet because it's so darn cold. And I hear that the rest of the United States up and down the East Coast is getting hammered. And by hammered, I mean eh, a few inches of snow. Right, right. It means they're going to shut down. You mentioned that uh, you're not seeing comments on the on the YouTube channel, and I noticed that too. I've been checking for three days now, so um, I have no idea how that could be affected and how it would happen. Oh, I hear myself. That's me. I fixed it. You're, yeah, you're okay, I right? Can't, uh, you know, that's not something for the podcast necessarily, but I can't well, see anything in the back end of YouTube that's causing this. Ah, uh, so you look too. So uh, the reason I bring it up is because probably our live viewers are some of our most active YouTubers. So yep. if you are having trouble uh, posting, be aware that we're aware and we're yeah. Trying to like it out. says, there's eight comments on my uh, obvious RC groups extra 330 LX video. Mm -hmm. Thousand fifty two views already since yesterday, and eight comments. But you but can't, I can't see, see any of them. Any of the comments? They're not yeah, there. Sure. It's weird. I'll go dig around. Um, you know what we should do? So I, I advertised it in the title. Uh, the review. The review just came out. So, Jason, why don't you cut over and share the screen of your recent review of the Avios RC Group's Flying Giants airplane. So, Matt, we were discussing about is it an RC Group's Flying Giants airplane or just an RC Group's plane? And while it does have a Flying Giants logo, yeah, um, it doesn't say it on the wing, but on the wing, it does say RC Group's. On the so, oh, here's, yeah. here's how this went down, you know, and... I think uh, Jim Burke's primary, his MO was to make it an RC Groups airplane. RC Groups is the was the bread and butter for him, all this good stuff. Flying Giants was the secondary site, if you will. And so he wanted to throw his other baby in there by putting the Flying Giants logo on the side of it as a secondary logo, you know, as right, the right, second right. second largest logo. And then you have all the other little logos all over it. But yes, it's primarily a, an RC Groups aircraft. And then it's got a little love for FG on it. So we put it on FG. And I'm happy to say 
Yes. That uh, everyone has accepted it. Positivity. And, and Positivity. when we say secondary site, we don't mean you're second in our eyes. You're just uh, <laughs> way, Group, to, way to clarify from a politically correct standpoint, well, Jim. What I'm saying is RC Groups was founded in 96. So it is uh, numerically the, the first site we ever had. Um, yeah. uh, here's uh, some background for the, for podcast listeners who expect to get more than normal people, because that's what we're here for. Um, I was contacted by Jim Burke. He had just had this scheme that you saw in the leading image done by Mirko. Mirko also did the plane for Habico and uh, is pretty famous for his full scale airplane schemes. So he said, Jim, I want someone to do this as an RC plane. Please go make that happen. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. And, uh, I thought, okay, who would do this that I know? Who would do a good job and who could do it in a timely manner? Timely manner was one of my primary concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, since this, we've had multiple companies come to us and say, we want to do some airplanes. So there may be more to come. But uh, Stuart at Hobby King was busy uh, doing a lot of great stuff. And I contacted him directly. And let's scroll back up. Maybe uh, maybe scroll back up to that main image, Jason. Or maybe the, the video while I talk. Unless you uh, want to talk during the video. This is the, this is the Hobby King video. So my video is down here. So anyway, Stuart has worked with us. And then I worked with uh, Mirko. And I found out that we owned the rights to that scheme fully. This was not any way. It wasn't a combined effort with Mirko. We paid for the scheme rights. And um, then we got all that to them. And then they started flying it. And this was probably over a year process to make this happen. And this is take a while. It did. Uh, I, I was hoping for six months. That's what I was shooting for. Evidently, I'm I'm not an airplane designer, and that's not very realistic. So, Jason, why don't we, uh, you do a little vocalization here? Well, so a couple of things I'll touch on. I'll scroll back here. So I'll pause right there. Whoop, uh, there we go. Fade. So one of the things I really liked about the plane is Avios. They tend to do a higher quality um electronics and components and hardware and everything. And so like, there's really nothing on this airplane that I'm like, I would rip this out and change it because it's crap. You know, that doesn't exist on this airplane, which is awesome. Good to know. So uh, the servos are all like 25 gram digital metal gear servos. They're super torquey way up to the task of extreme 3d large control throws and high loads. And then all the hardware is ball link, really nice, solid, secure, no no uh, lag or slop or anything in any of these linkages. Um, so I was really pleased. It's got pull-pull hardware for the rudder. That's already all installed. All you got to do is adjust the uh, linkage uh, maybe, to get maybe, the tension uh, correct. Full screen that video. Uh, it's hard to see and talk here. But we'll see. Does that look good? Okay. And then so this is one of my favorite parts. When you get to the field, you don't have to remember screws or screwdrivers or anything to deal with. You just bring your batteries and your transmitter and you're ready to go. Let me stop you there. I've literally stopped flying airplanes after six trips to the field with all the screws and screwdrivers and, and then etc. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, never mind. So the wings literally you can see that um tab right here, this little uh, plastic slot. Uh, this is what the wing, uh, this is what locks the wing onto the fuselage and secures it. The spar is obviously carbon fiber and, you know, it's pretty strong. And then this little black box right here is the servo connections. It's all auto connecting um, on the inside of the wing and here, and it just, you plug it in, you can't get it wrong. You can't mess it up. It just connects and you don't have to worry about it. Black boxes on model airplanes. There you go. It is really nice though to be able to do this. Um, so you can see here, we're just gonna slide it on. It's literally just a couple of seconds. Sound, Matt? I sure did. <laughs> How about this, ka-ching, ka-ching. Ka -ching. Get that on. When it's on, it makes a sound. Ping. Underneath the wing. <laughs> yes. The unpinger is this little plastic tab. D ping. They call that a, call that a D ping. It almost looks like a magazine release for a long <laughs> black. Uh, like gun. an AR. Yeah, you can get yeah. a aluminum, <laughs> aluminum accessory for that. Paint, if you it, want. paint it black. Paint it black. So you just paint. reach under, push that tab in, and pull the wing off. It's and then that it goes, simple. Pong. It goes. Rockoey. And then I have, no here, I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> this is kind of nice. It's hard to really tell right here. Let me get my hand that out of the way. It's a big pack. What's uh, up with these glacier packs? I love them. I love glacier packs. They always yep, yep, perform yep. well. Sorry. So this is a 4S battery. It's let me see if I can. That's not bad at all. Get a better job here, Jason. You're a great hand model. 
the tray, I don't know if you, you're not going to be able to see it. So the tray is, there's some, there's wooden structure inside. And then they've got this layer of foam uh, that the battery rests on. So it's ah. like nice and plush kind of for your battery to live. It comes with an XD60 connector on the speed controller. But here's one thing you got to, you got to, you got to do. I was going to stop you right here. Right <laughs> wait, here. Wait, wait. Tell me. So see this battery uh, location. Strap. And yeah. where the strap is. So, well, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna stop you anyway. Everyone, listen to me carefully. It is it is battery not straps point. don't work. You think they work? <laughs> they don't work. Okay. Well, they you. work. They work if you put them in the correct position, as you see in this video. Mm. So what happens is this the Velcro strap is pre-installed, and it's a giant slot. So you can slide that strap, you know, forward or aft. Um, and just so happens, not on this flight, obviously, but the next day. I or maybe no, what's it? It was about a day? week later. It was about a week later. Yeah, I went back. I was like, I want to get some more, you know, video and have some more fun with it. Um, I, I must have the strap must have moved itself forward on its own, and I didn't even think about it. Uh, I was worried about other things, so I strapped <laughs> my battery like at the front edge of the pack. Yeah, you know, at least a fourth of the way from the front of the battery pack is where the strap was, leaving three quarters of the battery just sitting there on some foam, no other form of <laughs> adhesion or, or hey, uh, I'd laugh when <laughs> so I've been there. What do I do when I take off? I go up, I go inverted to check the CG because I had added some nose weight. And he uh, says, Oh, that's better. Oh, this is nice. And then I'm turn around, inverted. I was gonna do a, an inverted snap and start having fun. And when I did that, the canopy ejected. And I'm like, holy oh crap, holy. how would that happen? Because it's really on there by a really strong magnet. Mm -hmm. There's no way that canopy is going to blow off. And then I realized, oh, I don't have any control, and it's doing an inverted flat spin now on its own. And I want to stop here. Uh, I've been with Jason flying for years, and when he said he didn't have it doing that inverted flat spin, I knew he was just joking. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, you know, you do the whole thing when you don't have it. You hold the transmitter up higher because somehow that's going to bring it back. Yeah. So I do it up higher, and I'm starting to, like, walk towards it, like, come back, yeah, yeah. come back. Uh, but uh, what happened was the did. battery decided it wanted to uh, eject it itself around. in the inverted snap, you know, at the beginning of it. And it just blew right through the hatch and disconnected. And we found it like some 200 feet away from the airplane. It was not easy. And luckily, the plane just inverted flat spin, had a nice, fairly soft landing. Yeah. Prop was perfect. Uh, just crunched the nose ever so slightly. Yeah. I thought the whole front end would be off and yeah. it looked flyable and the motor mount, which is plastic. Uh, it broke, uh, it had like a crack in it and it was enough where I didn't want to fly it right then, but I went in since and used some of the uh, foam tack. Yep. Um, the, the, it's like two part epoxy almost, but it's like a, a cement for plastic that kind mm -hmm. of bonds it together. Matt, kind of it. You, have you used any of this stuff? Foam tack. Oh my God. I live. I, no, no, I no, 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 no. It's but, foam tack uh, brand, but it's not adhesive. It's it, it's, it's uh, four plastic, plastic parts. So what well, I it's that stuff that you did the sort of quasi review on a while back, where you were making parts out of foam tack stuff. Is that what you're talking about? No, no. I don't know. Uh, I'm grab I, it. I'm, I, I have here. a review of this. So Matt, <clears throat> I, he, he we're looking at it, and I said, you know, my son had a throttle uh, for a car game. It was like a real plastic throttle that he used while he play a game. Mm -hmm. Snap. I thought certainly. So it's Fintac uh, plastic welder. It's two parts okay. syringe with static mixtures. But it 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 welded that plastic foot pedal together for six months. That's a little kid jamming on a piece of plastic. So I've I never heard of this product. This this uh, gotta have it wizardry as we call it in the industry. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah, all I yeah, say yeah, is whatever. the plane can take a hit and keep on going. So it's all repaired and back to flying order right now. Um, and here we go. You're about to see some of the flight. What's up, y'all? Jason Cole here. Hey, hey. And I'll do the music. Ah! <laughs> ah! I said the music sounded like screaming sheep in the video. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> ah! Look at this blender, man. This is <laughs> <awesome blenders. laughs> 
<laughs> There's the inverted flat spin that it kept going on. So, Jason, question. Does it, like, I saw you doing some alphas down low. It looked really nice. Does it hover well? That's my question. Does it hover? Can it just hang there on the property? Oh, it hovers great. Yeah. Not, I'm so rusty with 3D that it's not even funny. I, you know, I'm the same, though. It's pretty funny. It'll do it. I mean, you can see it coming up. It's going to come into a hover and pretty low to the deck. And you know, no wing rocking. Yeah. No like gyro on this thing, y'all. This is aerodynamics here. No, no euro. No, no carrier's good. This is me trying to figure it out on the first flight without really any experience or flight time with this plane. Just kind of sorting things out. So this was literally the maiden. I suspect. I'd say that that's once a you get maiden. Really comfortable with it. You know, it's gonna be really nice. Maiden it's, flights. You're doing it right. The second video, or when we, when he crashed it, we went back to shoot a second video because he wanted to do a video after he'd flown it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, you got it. We got the video, Jason. And so luckily we did. Yeah, luckily I'd already gotten what we needed. So Stuart contacted but us. I think it looks awesome in the air, man. Yeah, it's a good looking bird. But that's what it was designed. I mean, the premier designer designed it. It should look awesome. So for those that don't like the scheme, are the stickers did yeah. it come off? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked that. Why would you deface such a gorgeous model by ripping the stickers off of it? I, I'm 100% <laughs> sure you cannot take the stickers off. Without I think that guy might have been a band member. You can take you leave white spots. Look at that. Nice little knife edge. She's a hot rod yeah. for sure. How much does it is it feel overly heavy? You know, sometimes planes feel heavy, heavier. Um no, it's actually really light for its good for its size. The the wings are what do they call them? Light core, where it's mm -hmm. it's almost like a balsa built up design, but with foam. So there there's hollow sections inside with ribs and um everything that's just super light. The fuselage isn't very heavy. Um so I guess my other question is, as an RC Group's employee, can we get one? I mean, are you the only lucky guy? Yeah, it only takes $319 at HobbyKing.com. I'll put in a good yeah. word for you, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, man, because I do want it bad. I really so, do. So um, Stuart, who's no longer with Hobby King, but was uh, really the kick, the guy who kicked this whole design off for us, um, he asked after I, t I wrote him and I said, here's a review and blah, blah, blah. And then he wrote back and he said, yeah, but what do you really think, Jason? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I was with him. I know he likes the airplane. So what you're yeah. reading in the review is exactly what Jason thinks. Yeah, I just reiterated essentially what I said in the review to Stuart. I was like, I, I really like the quality, the hardware, the way it flies, the way it looks, the ease of use. Those and are like, like and the box showed up at my door undamaged. I began to unbox it and it looked nice. Inside. <laughs> yeah. I guess it like, no, be, please stop. You're like, no, I'm speaking from the heart, man. It would be really bad if we didn't like it. it you know, wouldn't that be terrible? I so. was, you know, you know, you, you always have that concern. Like this is something that's tied to your name, you know, yeah. groups, and you're like, what if this is terrible? You know, the last time this was done was the RC groups foamy that I did when I had my own company. Do y'all remember that little foamy? Billy hell LTD. Billy Hale RC. Uh, the the good news was that thing was also that's the thing that reminded me is it was such a killer for me. Mm -hmm. Well, the full reviews on RC groups, you can go check it out. We were waiting to let it go until you were able to buy the plane, and that went live yesterday. And I've seen it everywhere, man. Banners uh, all over the internet is everywhere. Are we monitoring the um, live chat on this? Yeah, I just good. was just able to. All right. So okay, quick, all three of us, top two airplanes that you want right now assuming it's no snow you can go outside and fly top two aircraft jason go oh i, I need a minute i don't know jim go i want a mavic okay that's not all a, right that's not an airplane it doesn't matter it's an aircraft i did say aircraft i did get the airplane that i really wanted last year yep um what would i want though oh i know one all right, you do that. Go it's, ahead, it's, Jeff. It's sitting in Matt's uh, room, I bet. Hmm. The the um, Nano Goblin? Nano Goblin. I well, got it. you can make that dream come true, my friend. It doesn't cost a lot. Hey, let me ask you something, Jason. I'm going to do this right now. Let's let's talk. All right, let's seriously. <laughs> but no, no, no. Listen, I will. I, okay, Nano Goblin's built, but I am snowed in for at least a month now. Pull do your you camera it? back a little bit. Huh? Oh, we can see it. How's there, that? There you go. Sorry. All right. Ask your question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you want it? Oh, I do, but I I don't want to take on a review project right now. I, that's where I was going with it. Yep. I've, I've got too much stuff, and you know, it's it's gonna be here before I know it. All right. 
Well, I asked. I've already and I've already torn down my photo table and studio, oh. and that stuff's gone. Um, it's it's Jason's packed moving. up, ready to go. All right, so Jim, what's your other? So Jason, you got the nano gob, the nano goblin, as the we goblin. call it, and the Jim wants a Mavic. I yeah. want. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. I was going to say the other plane I was wanting, but I did receive was the Commander. Nice, mm. nice. Which is also a Merco design. I want the F-18, that new F-18 Super Hornet. I love that aircraft, every bit of it. I am a sucker for the F-18, and uh, it looks awesome. So my second one is is something I already kind of took care of. I went ahead, went to the local hobby yeah. store and bought the Indutrix FPV Plus. Oh, and by the way, uh, if one of you guys, I promise I'll fix it. I had it. to have it after seeing Okay, one of you guys uh, click on my review and present it to everybody. Yep, we can do that in a second here. The, the Inductrix. Oh, there's Jason. Hold on. Hi. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Meow. It, look, meow. it looks good. Meow I uh, I guess my other meow mode. Nice. My other final aircraft would be the one that's in the back there, Jason. Your uh, your 300 LX. Mm hmm. All right. Let me get this review up here, and I'll I'll present to everybody. So the review for the Inductrix, while we spoke about it in our last podcast and showed the video, we won't do that again, um, actually went live today. Let me know when you see it. So if you're wondering, Jim, how'd you get that awesome photo with Terry in the background? I actually put that on a stick and then turned the motors on and then Photoshopped out the stick. Golly, see? Man. That sounds like a Joe Vermillion thing. Behind Nothing the is real. You can't trust anything, guys. <laughs> it's all Photoshopped. It sure is. So I got to say, man, I've had this a while. I bought some more batteries. Jason uh, hooked me up with the STL file to print out a case for it. And this is an awesome little quadcopter. It, it, the, some awesomeness is it, it's a DX9 friendly. It's my focal DVR friendly. So it's a micro quad that will run off full size goggles, not off a of phone or anything like that. And um, I got to say outside, I was really getting some decent distance. Yeah. And I'm toying with putting a 200 milliwatt uh, transmitter on there, but I'm probably not going to mess around with it since it's you know, my favorite part, though, is it yeah. uses 500 milliamp hour batteries. Yes. Oh, man, it, that's wonderful. It runs forever. So, it, I mean, I was getting, you know, 30 seconds, minute, minute and a half on my old tiny whoop original. Just the batteries were shot, I guess. But even Same then, here. you still don't get a lot of flight time on those little 150s, 200 milliamp hour packs. I think I'm getting like six minutes on mine. Now. Yeah, 500. It's oh, enough. Look. You have a ball with it. Look at this, guys. Can you see the chop? Yeah, oh, it's a little uneven right there. You need, you need some work, buddy. <laughs> but uh, one of the things is it's not only the big battery, it's the connector. They changed to the better connector. Yep. And yep. Um, how about that one? I can see I the could, chop. I couldn't. I didn't see it. I wouldn't really... This but uh, these are all glamour shots of a little tyke that you can just stick in your bag and take with you somewhere. I would have taken this to Mexico, but I did not want to chance the DX9. So I wasn't going to say this because it may not come true, but I may be getting a spark. Cool. Oh, nice. Um, like uh, for review or as a yeah. fun toy? It might be a review. It's too, it's too thin to really lean on. But um, so what I was thinking about this unit. And uh, what it does for you, it's it's not really a DVR type of deal. It's more of a uh, play around in, in your goggles around the house and in the backyard. And then the Spark is more uh, shooting video, but 1080 as opposed to 4K, Jason. True that, true that. The, the 1080 feeds I saw coming off of that thing looks very nice. The Spark video is good for what it is. It's You just can't expect to get personal level commercial results. From it, but it's not what it's for. It's for right. going out and having fun and shooting selfies and vacation videos and stuff. It's perfect for that. And the Inductors FPV Plus is kind of a lower cost, simplified version of that. And, but see, the Spark's not going to talk to my my uh, fat sharks, whereas, and that's what I want to wear if I'm going to go fly around. Like, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I whack this thing into windows, trees, walls, branches. Yeah. Um, Dude, it, I let, I let yeah. two young kids fly this as their very first RC anything during christmas break and i was surprised i didn't have to tell like i didn't have to save it i didn't have to take the transmitter away they were just banging the right stick around flying this thing yeah. around and then i had it in the church gym uh for my wife's family christmas 
and I had all my little nephews like chasing this thing around the gym and they couldn't catch it. I had a ball. I would come up to them and fly backwards and over their heads and all around the gym wore them out, which everybody loved. Oh yeah. But it's just so fun. It's so easy to fly even low time first, you know, never flown an RC anything before and they were able to do it. You can't hurt it and, and you can't hurt other stuff. Yep. Like all my guitars. Dude, you are totally man spreading in your chair. <laughs> I talked I'm glad that. you're not on a subway because somebody would tell you to move. I talked about that in Mexico. I was watching a video the other night. Somebody we knew and uh, they were man spreading. It was a lady. Dude, you were just uh, like, uh, where is that man spread here? Uh, okay. Anyway. So anyway, yeah. I love mine. Um, if you're thinking about it, I would say, yes, you should go get it. It's pretty awesome. There you are outside. Now, I will say it is kind of pricey. Um, it, you do get some great things like the, you know, the DX, DSM2, whatever X, bind and fly, and then the Meow Mode is pretty cool. But I've seen some really nice whoops for 30 to 60 bucks mm -hmm. um, coming out of China, you know, that are really nice. They still use the smaller batteries and things, but yeah. you don't have to spend 140 bucks or 160 or whatever I paid for this thing. It was 139 maybe. But uh, I'll flip side you. What you're looking at here is a fully modified uh Inductrix with uh, uh, upgraded motors, upgraded battery, upgraded connector, upgraded yep. video, upgraded camera. So you get everything and you don't have to build it. In is meow it, mode, is it, it's a lifesaver, dude. You know how many times yeah. you just end up upside down and normally you'd have to go walk and pick it up and you just mm -hmm. flip it right side up and keep going without moving. It just is adds it to the 25 fun. milliwatt. Yeah. Okay. But so they haven't, they haven't punched it up to 150 yet, huh? Now they should. They should be running 200 milliwatts in there. Yeah, uh, but maybe that's some sort of legal thing. I don't know. Look, that video you just saw me going up and down the creek. It looked a little bit fast in the video, but it felt like I was hauling the mail in the goggles. I was mm -hmm. like, "Wow, Jason, do you feel like you're going really fast in yours?" It, it does go really fast, and in, in uh, full manual mode, you can get this thing ripping. Um, and it's yeah, if you're in a tight, confined area, you're gonna you're gonna be in a wall quick. You gotta rip banana you, know, tear. you gotta control it. Yep, you gotta fly it. But it does very, very nice. Very, and like in here, I'm surrounded by a brush and power lines and water, and um, it didn't care. And Dr. FPV Plus don't care. Just like Honey Badger. Well, he don't care. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's bet. Uh, huh, what? You know what I think you should talk about? Talk to me. I think you should go to maybe Flying Giants or RC Groups, and let's talk about contests. Contests. There we go. Or we could go to your personal email and just see what's up. <laughs> Did it just show my personal email? <laughs> no, no. All right. There we go. Um, here's. Yeah. Okay. Well, we that's a, that's a double contest right there. You can click on that. This contest is actually on RC groups and I'm simply telling and making aware the FG guys. Mm -hmm. So this is Leo of FMS. And Leo is now the proud sponsor of the electric warbird section on rcgroups.com. Thank you, Leo. Um, and so I said, Hey man, you know what we should do to celebrate this is have a contest. I said, you tell me what you want to give away. And so I, he said that this is the most expensive plane on the site. Wow. Yeah. And I said, well, I can't really ask for more than that. And then I said, I'll come up with a concept. And so the concept is, I think brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea. And well, I'm a really great guy. Humble. <laughs> <laughs> Humble What's that called? Humble, humble something. Uh, humble pie. Humble no, no. Uh, humble brag. That was a humble brag. That's what it's called. So, Never so anyway, um, to enter this contest, you go to FMS and you go to the to the thread here or the uh, post, and there's a link, and you pick out your favorite airplane on the site, and then you go back to the thread and post a link to the airplane you love mm -hmm. and a picture. Bang, yep. So you it. would go. You could even post. This FMS Tiger Cat, if it, yeah, it is $500 plane. That's expensive yeah. for the most expensive on their site. So right click so yeah, the link, uh, yep. save the photo. And, and then, then you would head on over to rcgroups.com and you would go like this. You would you would, go, there you go. Look at all these. This looks like a great model. I can just imagine beating up the strip with one of these. Beating up the strip. Um. Yep, and then you would post that, and then you would say, <laughs> "This one's my favorite," and you would post that. That is a pretty good looking yak. And so you've entered. That's it. You've entered. And the uh, the next question is: Is can I only enter once? No, man. 
Just you can go back and rolling. find another airplane you love. Cal, get the link in the photo and get back in there. Bert. I got to <laughs> say, as awesome as that sound <laughs> is, I, I never enjoy hearing it. It's, it's Really? Well, it's frightening and it's disturbing. I love it. It's, it's more like a... Right? Look at this. Oh, that's nice. What is he, flying in a graveyard? <laughs> wow. Anyway... <laughs> Question. Two stones done. in the background, <laughs> or it's those, it, or it's those stub ups from the because uh, they're flying in a landfill with noxious gases everywhere. Uh, I bet that's which is something we all know, right? So, uh, uh, not concerned. Said the guy who's got his three D printer going ten feet from his head. I know, right? Blasting some ABS particles in the air. So, Matt, this isn't the only contest going, right? No, no, we have still another contest rolling on. Flying Giants. It's this one right here, right? Yeah. Uh, RC Gadgets. RC. Now, I, this was not my idea. RC Gadgets came up with this. And I ha I have to be frank. Uh, you make it too complicated and you really limit the entry level. But I have to say I'm seeing them come in every day now. So you uh, take the white uh, plane design and then the, right there, you just saw it. Yep. And then you take it and then you create your own scheme in Photoshop or paint or whatever it is you people use. I use Photoshop elements over here. And then you submit it. And then I guess they like it. And uh, that's how you win. We have nothing that's to do it. with the winner here. No, nope, it's all them. Yeah, yeah I like it. Going in here. Man, there's Tape some good ones. <laughs> that's what you do. Instead of right, putting the logo in, you just write, this logo goes here. <laughs> <laughs> That's stop. funny. Wow, look at this one. <laughs> Dude went all out. Look Good at that. Talk about You know what? I personally vote for that one. It's like Tiger Mouth into Checker. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. awesome. In Sanita. I'm going to post how much I like that on there. I'm a picky... Uh, picky guy that's not the word i was going to use and uh i really approve of that you should write jim t graham approves billy hell approved billy hell approved here we go talented designers out there in there oh look at this, this one <clears throat> this, he had a name for that uh what is this right here on. this must be this guy with velo yep so we got some good entries everything's Rocking and rolling on autopilot, if you will. I love the shark teeth concept. Yeah, me too. That was pretty legit. I'm not so but, sure about their call letters, RCG. Yeah, no, it's a little too much. Like I don't know, RCG. It, we all were not sure. I thought they. We all thought they were talking about our logo. I know. Was, it was their logo. <laughs> hey, Crazy, this man. just in. I've caught the family cold. Uh, no, brother, it's, it's kind of coming just now. Yeah, no, it just now happened. Let's go back to the home page and take a look. See while I'm front and center. There's a lot of great news going up too right now. A lot of uh, new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we got three, four new airplanes, two of which are up and running. In fact, the main article I have yet to put up yet. So we'll do that. We got a new clip wing cub is as if the world doesn't have enough cubs. We've got another one. Uh, uh, there's not enough. Okay. Well, there's a, this yeah. is a 1.2 EPO clip wing cub. It's got a, uh, it's got a 10 sized motor in it and it's got a 40 amp ESC and it is designed on 3S. Should be a little hot rod. Hold Ripping on. in a Terran. Uh, Ripping in a Terran. Big post about millimeters and how disgusted. Oh, do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know let what? Me, let, me, let me see what that is in feet. Let me show you what I did here. Coming in at a wingspan just over 47 inches. So I did that. 1.2. Meters is around 47 inches. I did that to appease that guy, and it looked like it worked. Matt, I'm sure one of our lovely reviewers will want that plane, but if you need a reviewer and it's not 10 degrees outside, I'll review that. I like a cub. Yeah, I know, right? It looks pretty good. So we've got the old cubby, and then we've also got this butte. It is now, the striker redo, if you I, will. I have my hands on the this prototype. Now, it does have the exact same power system as the Cub. 10-size uh -huh. brushless, 40-amp ESC, but this one, talk about a different in, difference in airframe. You take the exact same motor and ESC and 3S, and it hits 85 miles an hour. Yeah. But 3S on that Cubby probably does around 45 yeah. or 50, right? 
So it's 105 miles an hour on a 4S pack. Look at that. Hey, look, uh, RC Group's logo. I right was going to say, A, I like your logo. B, can I put a camera in that nose cone? Is there Absolutely. A look, oh, yeah. It comes with a, it, it's an extra. It costs $44. That nose cone. Wait, what? Um, the nose that, cone costs $44? Yes. So it comes like this. With the camera? Yes, with the oh. camera and the <laughs> uh, and the um, okay. VTX, but it does not say what camera and what VTX. I'm afraid it's got that little tiny doohickey in it. I hope it doesn't. But mm. well, we can always fix that. It's f it, and because the information isn't up yet, it just says a blank picture. Well, anyway, you get this nose right here with the camera in it for forty four dollars extra if you want it. If not, you're flying it line of sight or putting your own camera on board. Look at this. People are loving it. Our good buddy Vapor Trails down in Hot Atlanta getting a little bit of snow says, yes, we'll take two, please. I know Bradley Bowman loves these planes. I've flown his striker with him a number of times. I so regret selling my striker QQ. Yeah, man. So Minutes uh, before I got into winged FPV, little did I know what a killer FPV plane that would have been. Note to self, anybody that says, damn, is on my friends list. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. Hemi killer. Awesome. Lane would not like that. Um, there you go. Detachable wings, 10 size motor, 105 out the box with a 4S pack. 105. That's awesome. Yeah. And it is not too expensive either. Let's head on over to HH and check it out. 179. That's very reasonable. With an AS3X in it. How do you like that, man? That's oh, it's the, also got that launch ability that we all like where you just let it go and it flies itself out. The AS3X aspect really makes it a great FPV option. It does because if you have to adjust your goggles or somebody comes up and says, A, how high does it go? And B, how fast does it go? <laughs> but you could put it into uh, sort of, you could put it into hold, right? It lands its it damn self. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. All right. We'll stop presenting. Whoa. I've shown shown some good stuff here. So yay. Woo -woo. Oh, and the other plane, which I haven't even put out yet. Um let's okay. Can I share again or should I? Yeah. It is an odd time to be releasing all these new airplanes though, right at the first of the year, don't you think? Okay, I was trying to question why they were doing that. And um I was literally thinking about that today. And my thought is it is uh Right after Christmas, and everybody has a whole bunch of money, and they want to buy something. <laughs> That's not does a that, bad concept. Does that make sense, or doesn't? I don't know. Anyway, here we go. The newest plane is a twenty cc. Uh, okay, I'm on the fence. What do you guys think? Right off the bat, what's your thought? I'm not a Warbird guy, but that thing looks awesome. It's very scale. It looks nice. It's balsa, but. It is a P forty seven. Although everyone loves a Razorback, right? Everyone's yeah. seen, everyone's seen the bubble cockpit enough, and uh, I think I this Razorback looks nice. So maybe I'm wrong, and I like this one too. Pingy two. Pingy. Pingy Those crazy World War two guys. I'm telling you, man, they put anything on their nose. Um, I've seen three ninety nine. It is set up for electric or for gas. You can get this beautiful one point two cubic inch. Uh, Gas engine for only two seventy nine. That's a pretty good price, actually, for that. Good looking plane. That's a nice photo right there with the pretty thunderhead in the background or cumulus cloud. Flaps down. Flaps down. Pass, y'all. Um, what do we think here? <coughs> good looking. Optional retracts. All right, so you don't get retracts. It's fixed gear for four hundred dollars. Okay, I don't know. I like it, but I wouldn't, I mean, I was hoping, I don't know. I'm always hoping for an OV 10 Bronco. Why can't I get some company <laughs> yeah. to make a nice looking OV 10? Please seagull. If you're listening, uh, maybe if, if you're FFS. listening, top flight, Habico, please make an OV 10 Bronco. And maybe you should I, write a feature, Matt. Please make an OV10 Bronco and then write your reasons. Oh my God, that's, a reason, that's a really good article idea. Top 15 reasons why you should do it. Number one, they're awesome. Number two, I refer to number one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know if y'all saw this, but in the middle of the holiday season, Kike Zini called me mm -hmm. and he said, hello, Yim, it's Kike. 
And I said, Kike, Did he Merry say Christmas. Yeah. And he said, Feliz Navidad, my friend. Your pants are broken. No, that's somebody else. Him for anyway. Did you see where he released? <laughs> where are we going with this? I don't know. Uh, he released the QQ Cap 232 EX. Did y'all read that story? No, where's it on? Oh, it's on rcgroups.com. I didn't see that. Oh, god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so it was kind of a special debut thing. He sent me all the information. He said, please don't. He said, please don't read any of this until tomorrow at three o'clock. Mm hmm. <laughs> I read it. Don't tell anyone, but, uh, I built the story and then I waited until he went live on Facebook and then I released my story and then I said hello to them while they were live and, uh, the story went up. Where is it? Oh, uh, let me give you a link. I actually watched a little bit of the live, uh, stream in here going on. No yeah. need to send the link. I got it. Gotcha. Kind of so, looks like a hot trigger on steroids. It's a pre, pre it comes with the aura eight, which is uh, awesome. Advanced flight control system. It has no coupling, something never seen before on a cap. It has light wing loading, seven to 12 minute flight times, uh, 2,800 to 2,200 5S or 6S, a 10 to 60, uh, 3D plane for amazing power. Hobby wing, 80 amp ESC night led controller. So it actually has lights in it. Scale lines, large battery compartment. Um, and then there's more, but Kike Somazini designed it. So you know it's awesome. Yep. I'm looking at some. Uh, let's see. What's the price on it? Where's your pricing? Jim, you didn't put pricing? Oh, yeah, you did. No, you didn't. Uh, no, nah, well, sometimes well, I do, well, and sometimes well, I don't. Sometimes I think if you don't know the price, you'll actually go visit the page. $489.99. I like the second comment. A known jerk has already given Seth's video seven dislikes from fake accounts. All right. <laughs> hey, we know all about that. Uh huh. It was me. Just kidding. This plane looks really nice. And uh, I'm wondering is it no coupling because of the uh, no. RA8, or is it literally got no coupling because they designed it so darn well? I'm going to say I the latter of the two. I believe he uh, mentions this in the in the live video, but I think he he uh, designed the coupling right out of there. That's I pretty can, cool. I yep, can yep. speak for the R8. It is definitely an awesome flight controller, and it makes everything awesome. Fly well. It's almost like it allows you to concentrate on flying the plane and not worrying about strange perturbances as it's flying. You know what I'm saying? Like things get rocking and and. And uh, next thing you know, your plane is changing slight direction and pitch and roll and all that sort of stuff. It just puts it on rails and allows you to fly. It doesn't fly it for you. So good stuff. Matt Gunn, you did a story on Flying Giants, the best of Flying Giants from 2017. Put a lot of heart into that one. And the first picture is myself and Jerry L. Smith. And I got a Merry Christmas email from Jerry L. Smith. He said, Jim, I'll try to say it like Jerry L. might say it. Mm -hmm. Jim. You always get me in a story. I sure appreciate you. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. He ho. He's so, a good old boy, Annie. He saw himself on the internet and had to write me. He's in go. Paducah, Kentucky. He's literally oh, yeah. three hours up the street. The booming metropolis of Paducah. There you go. So, There's Jerry and Jimbo. You know, so I forget people haven't been around as long as us because I think of myself as a newbie, but um, Jerry was a nine time Fun Fly World Champion. And Jerry battled such luminaries as Mac Hodges. Mm -hmm. Jason, who was the third guy in that? Who um, I think Bubba Spivey was around in those days, but there was a nerd. It was like uh, all the big boys. Um, of, Wait, Bubba, Bubba Battle Royale? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he flew against Bubba. And then, but he and Mac were big. Uh, he said that they would walk over and try to mess each other's planes up before contests. You know what? You know what was interesting is that up until last. Joe Nall, I had never personally met Jerry. Oh. And then uh, when when you introduced me to him, it was like we had known each other for years. He was so personable. It's just a really nice guy. Well, my favorite, I'll, I'll give the very short version of, uh, I was standing on the main line at Joe Nall with Pete Goldsmith, who was flying a 300-mile-an-hour plane. I think the legal number is 259 or something. But he <laughs> lost, uh, he blew a prop or something, but the plane went from going, what? to wow i mean like wow times two and it took a left or it took a right over the crowd yeah and, and pete goes i'm standing next to pete 
and Pete goes, I don't think I've got control. I don't think I've, I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to bring it around. So he maintained nerves, huh? Yeah. And then cut over to uh, Jerry L Smith and uh, Jerry L found me later that day. And he goes, Jim, did you see what happened up on the hill? And I said, no, man, what happened? He goes, Pete Goldsmith flew a 300 mile an hour plane straight at our tent. <laughs> and I said, well, what'd you do? He goes, I looked over at my buddy and I said, we better get the hell out of here. And we both hit the dirt and ran. And, uh, and, and Pete got it back. Wow. Not only got it back, he landed it at his feet. It was See, awesome. that is a, usually when, uh, something heads over the crowd with a blown propeller, it's curtains for whoever's on the ground at 300 miles an hour. But, you got uh, I mean, even if you're, uh, like off in the back lot, you better keep your head up. Just he's probably going them. through a personal checklist. He's like flaps check, uh, you know, clean britches check. <laughs> and he's probably saying it that slow as the plane's going bah! into the ground. And he's like, maintain control. And that was it. He did it. He's a I can't really do his accent. So he's, I'm Pete Goldsmith is a, is a luminary of the hobby. And I'm right now looking something up because he's got a thing going that I have been watching on Saturdays. Has anyone else been catching this? I have. No oh, yeah. His mm -hmm. uh, like tips that he does. Yeah. He so weathering something one time he was. Uh, yeah, Pete, weathering tips. Pete is like a, a national champ when it comes to scale airplane competitions. And so, like, on a Saturday, you'll be drinking coffee, and his lovely daughter shoots the video, and he'll show you how to create rust stains on rivets. And it, hmm. for some reason, I'm never going to do that, but I'll sit there and watch his video almost the whole way through. I don't understand where he finds the time to scratch build models at such a feverish pace. <laughs> How does he do it? And, it, and it, does he work full time or is he retired? He's retired now. He worked in yeah. Horizon, but he. That's left. right. Yeah, but I don't understand how a human being can have that much free time, even if you're retired, to scratch build as fast as he does. He's like new plane out and ready to rock and roll, and I'm like, weren't you just scratch build? Weren't you like sanding balsa blocks two days ago, Matt? It's yeah. inning, and it's got to come out. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, he's an yeah. artist. He's, he's an there. artist. Uh, some of his uh, designs are now being sold on the internet. I have a story about that on rcgroups.com. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. So 3D printing, I hit a slump. Everything that I designed in Tinkercad came out too small. I could not figure out what the heck was going on. I was like thrown in the towel. And this morning I woke up and I thought, just let's look at it and think. And then <laughs> it hit me. What? what? What was it? I'm printing right now. It looks very good. I'm using the wood PLA mat. And uh, what it was, I kept designing this thing that was when it laid down the footprint, initially it was too small. And I'm like, this is not what I'm designed. This is like half the size of what I designed three quarters I did it over and over. And I was like, what is going on? Is it scaling itself? Blah, blah, blah. Turns out that when I merged these two pieces together, one was uh, slightly lower than the other. Oh, so it had a bottom part. Yeah. That, was that wasn't touching the bed. So my brain said, maybe it's the base. And I took a invisible square and moved it up underneath and then just chopped the whole bottom at a single layer. And now I'm printing off a, it's going to be a, where's my camera? It's going to be a stand for my Apple watch and my uh, phone. Nice. Nice. It's going to be that. <laughs> Both of us are like, nice. <laughs> nice. Well, when I, when it, when it's done and finished, I'll show it to you. You should be impressed. Nice. I like it. Well, uh, I've been printing a little bit of stuff here. This is my. This little People thing is stuck my, on Maddie, Maddie, Matt on the feed. Oh, the no. feed. Sorry, guys. But Matt's well, talking now. So. Okay. Well, I guess no one wants to look at my mug anyway. Uh, well, we this, is the, this is the latest thing that I printed, and it doesn't Cub, look like Cub much. Will, will cover. Cub, Cub will cap. No. Look at the other side. All right. Oh, I know what that is. A dime holder. It is a dime holder, but why do I have... Oh. A half circle that can print up. Oh, I dropped it. Anybody have any ideas? I know you both know. So I'll um, just... It's for dead people. And then you put that on their eyes. In case right. you, uh, you, never mind. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Um, this is the Inspire One gimbal. And this is my high dollar lens that I just got. It's a brand new Olympus. Um, yeah, what is it? A, uh, a 12 millimeter 
f2.8, I think. Anyway, this is a really expensive lens. This is a $650 lens, and it really makes a world of difference in the quality of your photography and video, but it is extremely uh, heavy, so it was causing the, the, it to fall over, and they've been known to burn up motors. So here's what I did is you can see it on the back there. It's a counterweight, and it's my way of weighing this thing out. So there you go. It's perfectly balanced now with a counterweight printed on the back with a dime inside of it. That's all the weight you need to do it. You like that? Uh, it's pretty brilliant, man. That's what I love about these things. Is you I know. I could have just taped a dime to the back of it, and I decided I wanted to make it look as, uh, as you know, non-intrusive yep. as possible. So there you go. That's all the printing I've done lately. Factory. Factory. There you go. I made. Uh, it doesn't matter till I have the real thing. I made a uh, a, a uh, lithophane box for my wife and uh, have halfway done for my mother. You can see the box right there. But so uh, Matt, have you flown with that? Absolutely, I've flown yeah. multiple times with no it. No issues. Yeah. None. Not a single one. There you go. Yeah. What were you saying, Jimmy? Oh, nothing. I uh, just. I'm excited to be making again. I'm excited that printer's over there printing. And uh, I want to go to the next uh, Maker Fair in Nashville, whenever that is. Yeah. Well, it's it's usually in spring, I think. Yeah. I'll look it up. Well, me and you will go if you want to go. So I was in no Mexico. I was in Mexico and saw a film crew using a Mavic to shoot a uh, video for a condo. Mm -hmm. And I was urged to go talk to them since I'm with rcgroups.com. Mm hmm. And I went over, and uh, they absolutely spoke no English, and had never heard of <laughs> RC Grupo, RC Grupo dot com. Oh God! So I gave him a card, and he goes, "Yes, I go see, I go check." And uh, but I thought, what a sweet little gig! They really were photography crew that did Mavic on the side when needed, which uh, I got through Spanish, so evidently I understand a little bit of Spanish. Nice. Oh, hey, I got a story. You know how I, sometimes I tell stories that don't have anything to do with RC, but they're moderately funny. Uh, yeah, all the and time. I, and the other day I was going to tell you, Matt, how I, uh, I'm sure there's more stories than this. I did go into the place where it was selling questionable Mexican hooch and I did uh, demand that they serve it to me. And I did start banging on the table and buying rounds of drinks. And this is not the story, by the way, but uh, the next day I looked at my wife and I said, I'm so sorry. And uh, she said, no, no. She said, you were like into next level stuff. She said, you were like uh, on a whole nother plane. She said, I wouldn't get in the way of that for anything. But if you do it uh, like a lot, I'll leave you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a once a year thing down in Mexico only. I, well, my brother was there. So there was a lot of uh, loudness. We're pretty loud when we get together. But um, as you <laughs> may or may not know, I have to take eye drops every day for my eyes. Mm -hmm. And yep, uh, yep, yep. I'm always very careful. The eye drops are expensive. And Jim's eyes are surgically enhanced. I, they're, they're enhanced, and then uh, I have other eye issues. Much there's, It's going around in the community. And uh, Anyway, I, I have high-dollar eye drops, and I'm always careful. I take them with me on the airplane, and I make sure that. So I did something that I just can't believe I did. I put them in my medicine kit over the toilet, like on a shelf above the toilet. <laughs> in and Mexico. In Mexico, yes. And when I reached in the medicine bag to get something out, not Skabush. one, not two, not three, everything I owned plus all the eye drops, uh, the bag didn't fall in. All the contents were dumped methodically in the bottom of Mexican toilet pee water. water. Pee water. <laughs> so Wait. Not only was it pee water. It was Mexican water that we're told not to drink with. You know, at least it's sanitary. Yeah. That's right. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> So um, no. <laughs> we were sitting around the pool later. I, I methodically cleaned everything with this sanitizer. Uh, but uh, we were sitting around the pool later that night talking about what our uh, rapper name might be. So uh, my rapper name, I decided was little pink eye, little pink, eye. <laughs> little pink. Eye. Your, your drops are pink eye uh, inducers. They're like, don't touch the drop to your eye. I'm like, I dropped it in a Mexican toilet. <laughs> That's like 20,000. When I see my eye doctor, I'm going to be like, listen to what I did. And I can't wait to see the look on his face. He's going to be like, wow, I'm surprised you still have vision. So if you hear a song by Little Pink Eye, that's me. <laughs> this is good stuff, man. 
Yes, pink yes. eye inducing te- uh, drops. Well, the holiday seasons are over. All the holidays are basically over. Although I did look at our holiday list as a company. Did y'all get that? I did get that. Yeah, we're like, oh, we got a holiday coming up, like not too very soon. So, yep. But we're we're traveling is over. No one's going on vacation for a while, right? Nope. Yep. Nobody's going on vacation. Jason, I got a bir- you- I got a birthday on the twenty first, but I'm not going anywhere. Oh. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh. I'm okay. not leaving anywhere. I got to go to a monster truck jam for my son's birthday. That's oh yeah. Be- yeah. Wow. Wow. See, Matt, all sorts of good stuff in January and February coming up. Matt, are you going to the Frosty Dog or any of the uh, no, the no. stuff out at uh, the Pecan Patch or anything? No, that's that's like eight hundred miles away. Or the AMA or, East. Or, I mean, Jason, are you going to the Pecan Patch? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, no, not for anything coming up that I know of yet. I gotta say, I'm a little surprised. I I, I feel like I'm missing out on the AMA thing this year. I used to they go got everywhere. AMA West going on right now, which is yeah. probably a wonderful place to be. Have you ever been there, Matt? Up. I've never been. Been to California. Never been I've to been. AMA West. What was yep. it like? Big? It was. It was not quite as big as a Toledo. It was more of a. Uh, well, I think it's close. It's close, I guess. It's it's so different. It's California. The beautiful part is you fly. You know, it's December, or January. You fly out, and then all of a sudden you're over desert esque like land and then you land and there's palm trees and it's warm outside and it's it's very california yeah i like how you just condensed a cross-country flight into four seconds you take <laughs> hey, off then bam you're over the desert then bam you're in california i was like all right that's I, much, I wish it was that easy <laughs> i've condensed uh when people uh want to ask me about my life i've condensed it to like nine sentences wow give yeah. me one of the sentences I grew up on an exotic animal ranch. That's my lead in. <laughs> That's the beginning. There's so much left out though between that and back I, in the I, 70s. I moved in LA. I moved to Hollywood. Yep. yep. My father shipped me a sawed off shotgun. Yes. I was in the yada, LA yada riots. yada. Right. And here I am with you, lovely people. <laughs> then Madonna said, and I totally blew that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so there I was in a trailer with Mark Hamill. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. So I get a text from my daughter because you know, star Wars and Mark Hamill's in it. She's like, dad, tell me again, that story about you and Mark Hamill. She, hers was a little more intense, her request, but sure. Um, man, that reminded me of something else. Oh, I was on the airplane going to Mexico and I'm watching El Camino Christmas and a guy popped up and I tilted the iPad at my daughter and I said, see that guy, he used to be our neighbor. He hung out with us before you were born. <laughs> and then on the way back, I was watching Hickok, the movie. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the guy that I made the holster for that was in Tombstone. Yeah. He was in that movie. So I saw I would watch two movies with two people. I knew it. Crazy. That's funny. Ah, oh, you're such a Hollywood star, Jimmy. Well, all you have to do is move there. And then after about a year, you'll know them all. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a small town for good yeah. or for bad. Right? <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Didn't you get chased around a trailer by someone? Yeah, so these are, all, these are all stories for a uh, higher side. I feel like I'm a uh, I'm a. Uh, anyway, uh, the story is is that I worked on a movie and I ran a, I drove a star a star wagon and star wagon is where you haul around movie stars and so they do their job and they go back to their uh, star wagon and then they have all their bathroom and shower and sit around and talk to people smoke cigarettes and so in my star wagon was Shirley from Laverne and Shirley Ponch from uh, Chips yep. and uh, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill. And so this is where Mark Hamill and what I, a mo- what a motley crew, by the way. Yeah, man. What a, what a collection. I couldn't believe I was in charge of these people. And so they would come in and I would make sure they were taken care of and all that stuff. And so, uh, my, this is uh, never been told before other than to the guys, because I kept it secret for a long time because I knew it would be bad. So it's broadcasted. <laughs> yeah. We're going live now. If you're live, go ahead and don't stop listening. So, <laughs> Part of my job was to make sure when they got back in the next day that it looked really nice for them. And uh, I had a, a driver's license that allowed me to pull this trailer around. That was part of my job. The other part was making sure they were happy and all this stuff. So uh, this was early in my career. And so uh, I think everybody's gone. It's like 2.30 in the morning, maybe 3. And I just assume everyone's gone. It looked that way to me. It was dark. I open up the door to Ponch. What the heck was his real name? I said it yesterday. Anyway, I open Poncha's uh, door open uh, up, and I hear him snoring, mm. and I freeze. And I look over, and sure enough, there he is in his trailer. You don't do that. You don't go in the Star's trailer ever. No. 
Even if I, you're the star trailer uh, driver. Well, at this this time in my life, it probably would have been better to say, sorry, it's me. I came in to clean. Sorry, then I'd leave. But that's not what I did because I was like 22 years old. What I did is I walked backwards and shut the door behind me. Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada jumps up. Thanks, Scott. Starts screaming. Hi, you mother. Hi, hi. And then I start running. <laughs> so I start running. I already know I'm getting fired. And I thought, why get caught? I start running around the trailer. So I run around the side and now he's down the steps and I hear him running. He's screaming. I'm running around the trailer. He's running around. The, now we're running around and I would just keep missing each other. And then I was like, this, this is not going to end well. So I hooked the right. Woof. Yeah. He kept running. And so, um, I went back to my thing. Security gets called. A stalker has entered Poncha's trailer. Eric Estrada <laughs> had a life-threatening experience. I mean, security went to 10 after that. I never told anyone <laughs> it was me. That is a great, great story. I kept my mouth shut. And then until, Laverne. Until now, in two, until January 4th, 2018. Yes. So maybe one day we'll just do a whole hour of where I tell stories. I think that would be... <laughs> Very I entertaining. A, I have a Shirley story. And Probably would need a drink. Yeah. Well, yeah. they drink moonshine on the crash cast, so. Oh, they do, don't they? Yeah. Well, By the look, way, look, look at the time. <laughs> yep. It's time to jump. Yep. Three hundred one. Hey, everyone. Um, I do have a story coming out on Crash uh, on the Model Aviation Magazine AMA Mag. So uh, we did do a story about Crash on RC groups. I actually got Lane from Lane's Planes, good friend of Crash, to write his piece. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Um, but I felt like Lane needed to get his piece out there. Uh, maybe Lane should have been the guy who felt that way. Uh, I kind of forced him into it, but I've, I, I'm, I'm digging my hole here. I got to get yeah. out of my hole. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted Lane's perspective of crash yeah. for everyone to read. And he, he said, sure, man. So he wrote it. That's coming out in the magazine. And then Barbara Wolf, who's also uh, mixed up in that crowd has a digital piece. That is a sidebar to that, that you can see on the digital uh, magazine. Oh, nice. So all that stuff's coming out. The only reason and the reason I did it all was I wanted to make sure that uh, some things were out on crash in his life and his uh, impact on the hobby. And uh, so these were all the things that I personally could do to make that happen. So be sure and yeah. go read it. That's what I'm saying. Good nice. Work. Yeah, you did a good job uh, broadcasting all this sort of stuff. So, Well, you know what? I'll say one more thing about that. It occurred to me, he and I were talking all the way to the end. I could have had him write his own story or help me write a story or put his words in my story. He, I can't believe I didn't think of it. That would have been so awesome. Oh yeah. So maybe next time. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Jason Cole. Um, I guess we're not going to fly until nope. the weather gets over 10. Yeah. I, I'm, I like to be over 50. Yep. I don't even like um, to go to my car. I'm always surprised when my truck car. actually starts. Oh, I got that big, uh, group 31 deep cycle battery. That's also a starting battery. It's a $300 battery, but you know what? It works under all circumstances. So I have two in my truck. So, so far, so good. Yep. All right, y'all. Well, thanks to all our live viewers. In fact, we have 27. I hate to turn off the switch right now here at the end with that many guys watching, but, uh, we appreciate y'all coming on. And Hey, I wanted to say, if you have any questions or anything that you want us to answer or anything that you're wondering about, Shoot me an email, J Graham, the letter J, G R A H A M, at rcgroups.com. And I would love to include that on our next live hangout slash podcast and giving us more things to talk about. Be sure to tell your friends we need to expand the hobby, much yeah, like my gut. We need it to be bigger. Bam. And next week, I might have a story about how I sneak a tiny whoop into Ikea this weekend and fly around the store. Oh, that's a great idea. Do it, please. They won't throw you out, right? There's no real security <laughs> in there. It's just random people walking around with yellow shirts. Do it, Jason. We are heading down there this weekend. We're gonna. We've got a wedding uh -huh. in Chattanooga, and then we're gonna go uh -huh. down to Atlanta afterwards to. You know, check there's it out. two IKEAs I think in Atlanta now. That's how big Atlanta is. Really? Wow. Yeah, they're making another one outside the perimeter. Right now, there's one uh, sort of downtown, and that's the one I've always been to. But they're building another one outside. They're building uh, one two miles from my house. Good for you. May yeah, all man. your furniture be Ikea. Yeah. Your Florgen Bjord and your Hirgen Pirgen. I'm going to just print my uh, furniture from now there on. There you go. I thought about right. printing the fence for our property. I was like, man, that'll take like 30 wow. years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you would really need about 18 printers running 24 hours a day for a year. <laughs> yeah. and then you could print one beam. 
<laughs> so I bought the father-in-law CR 10 for, well, we all chipped in. I, I didn't, I didn't personally buy it for him, but um, it'll show up tomorrow. So how do you think that's going to operate? Do you think I'll be getting phone calls like for the next? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Three You're weeks. The one running it. Yes. Jim, the, the PLA won't come out. Well, you got to turn it on first. The father-in-law, you know what I said? <laughs> I feel bad. I'm not talking bad about your phone. <laughs> uh, this was highly inappropriate, but I said a few highly inappropriate things at Christmas. That's what Jason, that's why I brought it up twice. We had a second Christmas at their house. Yep. And uh, I said, uh, I just want you to know, Charlie, father-in-law, that uh, getting this machine is like dating a 22-year-old. <laughs> okay. Gonna complicated. Go. There's going to be tears. Uh, there's going to be things you don't understand. It's, things just aren't going to work. And uh, I said, uh, you just got to realize this is a relationship and uh, you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> that's an interesting analogy for a 3D printer, but I think that's it works. I said, I said, don't think you just bought a printer like a, like a paper printer where you just go print and then the paper comes out. I said, there's nothing like that, man. Wow. Yeah. Is he, he wants, he's not techno technology oriented, is he? Yeah, he is, but he's like, I think I'm going to print a P-38 uh, RC airplane first. And I'm like, you should probably start out with a Buddha. You, know, you should like probably that. start out with the, <laughs> with the square. You should, print, yes. you should print a calibration cube and see how it looks. And then I, yeah. then I called him and I said, have you ordered PLA? And he goes, no, why? And I was like, oh, you got some learning to do, boy. I said, get, <laughs> get on Amazon and go buy yourself some PLA so you have it when it gets there. Nice. He's like, what's PLA? No. Why do I need it? All right. Well, once again, the viewers haven't left. Well, let's talk about our date. Uh, Jason, our, what are you going to do later today? Oh, man. It's a good question. I am working on some spreadsheets for the home office. I saw that. Uh, no, it's not any uh, stuff we want to get totally into here, but it looks complicated. Oh, the whole ad thing? I don't even, I can't even do part of it. And I don't even know how some of it works. So if you've experienced the Amazon redirect pop up ads on RC groups, we are trying to deal with that every day. I, you know, I can only help and relay information. And then the, the techs back in the home office are the guys that are actually dealing with Google on it. And they just rec requested some more Saw information that, that seems, I, I don't know how I'm going to access it. It doesn't, with a redirect ad, I can't like right click on the ad on and my they phone. Sure did, they sure did uh, lay it out for you. They're like, we need you to do this impossible task. And if you can do this, you'll <laughs> save the world. You'll basically solve the problem forever. I'm Jason. looking more information on how to get some of the stuff done, but well, they, have, they have done a lot yeah. of stuff in the background to try to solve this issue. Yes. And I feel good about them, you know, working to try to fix it for us. That so. That is the big point to be made is that they are actually – I'm really amazed at the amount of time they're putting in trying to figure out this redirect problem on the side. So good for them. Those, those pop-ups are just a cancer. It is just an awful experience for anybody that has to deal with that. So I can understand why they want it gone. And Jason's been ramrodding this the whole time. Yeah, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah, on yeah. It. Well, so no congratulations yet. It's not solved, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I did the, it. Yeah, he did it. Well, so, we'll uh, Mac Gun Flying Giants, we just put up the ABS review. We have the contest. And so, hey, we definitely want to say to any Flying Giant people or Giant Scout people, if you have news, please give it to us. We want it. That we do. Yep. It's uh, oh, cool. Sorry, what? I didn't mean to interrupt. A guy just posted <laughs> in the chat. Scott Marshall says he bought it in Dutrix FPV Plus after reading Jim's review. Ah, hey, we're man. Selling, uh, selling, we're selling product. Put that in my put that in my thread so that I can uh, let a Horizon know. Heck yeah, that's uh, that's gold if you will. Is, that's at least two years old because I bought one too. Wow, yeah. Well, there's two, right? When we did all those posts on uh, the uh, on the Cub Carbon Z Cub, I would really like to know how many planes were sold from those articles. I think it was yeah, more than a lot. A bunch. It's always fun. You never really know. I um. I remember posting some little uh, widget from ready-made RC and next thing you know, they had were packing up hundreds of them and they were like, why are we getting this influx of these widgets all of a sudden? Everyone's buying. Oh yeah. Matt Gunn did a story on RC groups about it. 
I remember that came directly from Tim. He said that yep. to me. So our stories do sell products. It's good for it's good to know. So if you have one, let us know. Even if you're not a a, a company, maybe just know about something cool that's happening. Okay. I'm always looking for anything unique, like that uh, big VTOL that I did the story on. Nobody asked me to do that story. I just saw it and was like, holy cow, okay, I save it in my inbox and then I do a story. Yeah. And that's the thing that we often say to people that that think that we just do stories as a, uh, you know, for our, um, our advertisers, but it's not always true. When we see stories of interesting things we like, we do, we do pieces on them. When I see new products that I like, I like to let everybody know, even if the company isn't a, a uh, subscriber, you know what I'm saying? And then on the flip side, I love to support people and help support the site. So, um, that too, if somebody is a site supporter, then I definitely am looking for stories from them as well. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to I hate <laughs> to end the the good times, but uh, I'm sure people have things to do, and I've got to go get something to drink, like mm -hmm. iced tea. I think might be. Oh yeah. yeah it's, right, four, it's four ten over here, so uh, you're once out. I, uh, once once I get off here, I got to go over to my uh, in laws' house and and hook up their brand new flat screen TV that they got for Christmas. Well, that should not be hard. And drive some boats in the snow. Drive some boats in the snow. It actually works. But it's right, too Matt, cold God. for that. All right. Thank you for your time. Yep, yep. We'll see Jason you guys Hall. later. Next week. Oh, I need you to simmer down now. Simmer down. And finally, all of y'all out there that watch us, uh, we sure appreciate it. Spread the word. You know, it's uh, the RC hobby small. Let's make it bigger. Let's uh, let's get people on here and uh, talk and, and asking questions and moving everything forward. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host on rcgroups.com. Until next week, we'll be over here, you know, uh, dancing wildly. All right. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you.